PVA. Now, it wasn't that many years ago that it was almost law to cast out with some form of PVA attached to it. Now, I myself have fallen into the trap of probably not using PVA nowhere near as much as what I probably should do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the different types of PVA, the different ways in which I like to use it, and more importantly, the situations when I use each presentation. So this time around, I've come up to the Norton Disney Complex and the lake that I've chosen to fish is at Billy's Lake. Now the weather, as you can probably see behind me, is absolutely horrendous. It is bright blue skies, minimal wind and super high air pressure. But we've chosen to come up to here because it is a venue that's known to do bites in the winter. And what we're gonna be covering in this video is PVA, the uses of PVA, the different ways in which you can use it, and also the different situations in which I would use a certain setup. Now PVA is almost a forgotten method. When it first came out, everybody was using it, and it wasn't very often that you saw people chuck out a rig without PVA attached. So when I arrived here, much like I do on every other trip, I got the leading rod out and I had a little look around for a spot to fish. Now, the bottom of the lake is relatively clear, but there is a lot of sparse weed sort of lying around on the bottom as well. There's a lot of leaf litter as well, so it lends itself perfectly to fishing with a PVA bag presentation. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is put three rods on a spot like I normally would do, but to make sure that the presentation is absolutely perfect, I'm just gonna be fishing with tiny little mesh bags on D-rigs, giving them a little dip into the glug and firing them out onto the spot. And that way then I know that I'm fishing perfectly every single time. I could put spinner rigs out and I know they are so, so popular. But for me, I just don't have any confidence in them. Not to say I'd never use one, but coming to a place that I haven't fished a great deal of times, I have only fished here once before, I want to go in with something that I know works. And I think by adding a tiny little mesh PVO bag, it's not going to hinder the distance. It's going to enable me to fish nice and accurately because they're only small bags. So I'm going to be able to get them out to the clip. But more importantly, I'm going to be able to present these rigs out to where I'm fishing. I'm going to put 10, 12, maybe 15 spoms over the top sit back and see what happens. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you my starting approach and the method that I've gone in with. Keep your ears open because at the end of this video, we are gonna be doing a nice little giveaway. So there's two types of mesh available. You've got a fast mount and you've got a slow mount. Now it's very important to use the right mesh for the right situation and at the right time of year. Now it's middle of winter now, so I'm using the fast mount. The water is a lot colder. The PVA has got a lot more tolerance, but if I was fishing in the summer or indeed if I was fishing in deep water, I would be using the slower mount stuff. It is a lot tighter weave and it just takes that little bit of extra time to melt. And it means that when you're casting out of a PVA bag on that it isn't melting on the way down. And aside from this as well, Slow mount PVA, I've always found it better when using maggots inside a PVA bag because the holes are a lot smaller and it is a much tighter weave that when you're tying them, certainly with live maggots, that they're not coming through the bag and before you've made the cast, half of your bag is on the floor. So yeah, like I say, there's two different types of mesh. You've got the fast mount, which is what I'm using here in the winter, and the slow mount stuff. I'd probably use that around May to sort of October time when the water warms up and the breakdown of PVA is a lot, lot faster. Right, so this is the rig that I'm using. Now I don't need to talk in detail too much about this because it seems like every time I film it's exactly the same presentation and that is because I know that it works everywhere. So that is just an Illusion D rig and again about 10 or 12 inches long. So quite a long rig. Like I say, the spot that I'm fishing there is a bit of light weed out there. So what I don't want is to fish a short rig, the lead to land and then there to be no movement in the rig and if that sits over a little bit of weed it's not going to be presented as well as what it could be. So there you go, that is the rig that I'm using. Now the way that I'm attaching a bag this time around is I'm threading it down the rig, um, which this is just a way of getting some extra distance. Obviously there is a couple of ways in which you can attach the bag. So I'm going to thread my needle through there, put it on my rig like so and then I'm going to pull this down and what this is going to do is it's going to mask the point of the hook like I said I am fishing over a light bit of weed so if I can mask the hook as best as possible it just means that when it's landing in the bags mounting there's no chance of that hook being snarled up in the weed 
and that is probably no bigger than an 18 mil boilie. I've got my little hook bait there. I know as well when I'm casting it that the hook bait isn't gonna be tangling around the hook and all I'm doing before I cast that out is simply giving it a dip in a little bit of glug. This is Manila. I'm putting Manila boilies out so it makes perfect sense to fish that over the top, dipping that in a little pile of attraction around my hook bait. But there is another way in which you can attach a PVA bag to a D-Rig. It's not as streamlined, so it probably isn't gonna fly as far as what it would do if you were threading it on. But if I was fishing a little bit shorter, this would also be a good way of being able to attach a PVA bag to your rig. So I've got my little bag tied up there. I've got a little tag end, probably about two inches long. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the hook through the top of the tag end like so, and I'm gonna wrap it around the back of the hook and then back through the tag end by the knot that I tied for the PVA bag. And you can see there that that perfectly holds that hair in place and that means it isn't gonna tangle. And like I say, when that lands, you're gonna have a little patch of bait right around your hook bait. But I probably wouldn't use this style here of how I've attached the bag if I was fishing over the sparse weed like I am because it does leave the hook point exposed. And like I say, if that goes down and falls in a bit of weed, it could hinder your presentation and your rig could be sat in weed. So there's two different ways in which I attach a PVA bag. So if I'm ever fishing over a bit of weed, I'll always thread the PVA bag on. If I'm fishing at distance, I will always thread the PVA bag on. But if I'm fishing at a comfortable range over a relatively clear bottom, I'll attach the bag with a tag end. And also at the same time, I know that every single time that hair is not tangling around the hook. Then you can use a multitude of different baits inside PVA, but me personally, I just like to keep it very, very simple and I just use micro pellets. And these are just 2.3 mil pellets. They tie it nice and tight, which is another key thing when using a PVA bag. The last thing you wanna be doing is tying a PVA bag and it looking like an old sock. You want it as tight as you possibly can. And what happens as well is when the PVA, before it melts, it almost tightens itself up before it fully melts. And what happens is where it becomes so, so tight, when it eventually does melt, it melts under quite a bit of force and it sort of like puffs out a little bit, if you like, and it leaves a nice spread. Whereas if you tie it all soggy, sometimes it can curl up and it can hinder your presentation. And as well, the fish here on billies are reared on pellets. They do see a lot of pellets, so it makes perfect sense to put a little PVA bag of pellets right over where the hook bait is. And like I said, with mesh, you can add a multitude of different ingredients inside the bag to make it. Now, probably the most forgotten method of all is a stringer. Now, straight boilies out the bag isn't something that you see a lot of people do, but fishing here again at Norton, it is a no naturals venue. So worms, maggots, casters, they're all banned. So different variations, again, like I say, of putting different stuff in a PVA bag. Each fish has an individual taste. One of them might fancy a bag of pellets, the other one, might fancy a couple of boilers. So again, there is a couple of ways in which you can use boilers inside PVA. Now, first things first, you can tie it conventionally with your tag end and you can hook it on a D-rig. But if you're looking to fish long range with boilies in a stringer, there is a way that you can fish a little bit further out and still have a two or a three bait stringer. And that is fishing it like this. So I've got a three bait stringer, as you can see there, and I'm gonna use the top bait as a hook bait. So I'm pushing the bait, or the needle, should I say, through at an angle, like so. I've got my tiny little bit of corn as a stopper on the end. And this way, really, I'd fish this with a conventional hair rig, because if you're doing it with a D-rig and you miscast, you have to take the bait off and you have to re-tie it and re-put it on. So by using this with a conventional hair rig, you know that you're not gonna get any tangles and you can fish a two or a three bait stringer and using the top bait as your hook bait. So like you can see there, I've poked the needle through the top bait inside the PVA bag. I'm taking it to the rig like so, pulling it on, and then I'm gonna put a little boilie stop in there, pull that down like so, and there you go. A two bait stringer sat on the end of your hook bait, all inside the same PVA bag. Now I would use this, again, if I was fishing over a relatively clean bottom, if I was fishing over a large spread of boilies, because of how tight this bag is tied, like I say, when it melts, these two baits aren't gonna be sat right on the end of the hook bait. The PVA is almost gonna contract, then it'll explode and it'll just put a couple of boilies right around your hook bait. And you know that when you cast that out, there is no way that that is gonna tangle. So that's how to use boilies inside a mesh. Now, probably one of the most old school ways, certainly one of the very, very first ways that I ever saw PVA being used was PVA string. Now, PVA string isn't 
as streamlined as putting it inside a mesh bag. But it, like I say, it is one of the most old school methods and probably one of the most underused methods. And again, it is a method that you can almost deter how far your baits are gonna be separated from your actual hook bait. Now I've tied a little three baiter here. And what I've done is I've doubled the PVA tape over, which has given me a little loop at the top, which is where I'm gonna attach my hook and secure it in place. But what I've done is I've set a tiny little gap in between each of the boilers. Now when the PVA mounts between the boilers, that is gonna be the distance in which they are gonna be away from your hook bait. One thing I would say with this though, is do not butt your baits right up against each other when you put them on the stringer. You wanna leave a tiny bit of separation just so the water can mount the PVA because if you are on fish and you're chucking out to showing fish with this method, you might find that where you bite the baits up against each other, they're sat so tight that the PVA hasn't had time to mount and you might miss an opportunity of a bite. That's about that then for another Norton Carp. A little over 22 pound. This one taken on a little mesh bag just off the side of the baited area. It'll be absolutely freezing tonight. So I'm gonna slip this one back, put a little bit more bait over the spot. I'm gonna tie myself a few little bags in readiness and hopefully the action can carry on through the night. But what a start, look at that. A fine example of a Norton Disney Billy's Lake Carp. Now undoubtedly, the most versatile PVA of them all is a solid PVA bag. This presentation has caught me so, so many carp over the years. The only real issue with a solid bag is the speed of tying them, having enough ready, and also making sure that everything is dry when you come to tying the bag. Other than that, in my honest opinion, a solid bag is the ultimate one bite presentation. When you load the bag up, obviously you're loading the rig in so you know that it is not tangling, when the bag is going out, it doesn't matter what it lands over because whatever it lands over, the weight of the bag is gonna sink down, it's gonna crush down whatever it lands on, the bag's gonna melt and it's gonna leave you with a perfect parcel of bait with a hook bait sat proud above it. Now there is a couple of different ways in which I like to tie them. And one of the biggest things with a solid bag is where the lead is placed. Now, as you can see here, I've got two styles of lead. I've got a flat lead, and I've got a tri-bomb lead. Now I use the tri-bomb lead with the little bag stem if I'm going for extreme distance. And if I'm fishing anything up to say 100 yards or I'm fishing on a feature, maybe the side of a bar or the side of an island, I'll use a lead with a flat side like so. And also as well, it's worth noting, when it comes to tying a solid bag, lead placement is massively, massively crucial. If the lead is towards the back of the bag, it will tumble when you cast. You want the lead as central as possible and almost touching the nose of the bag. So I'm gonna tie one up for you now and show you just how easy a solid bag is to tie. I'm gonna use the rapid bag loader. They come in two different sizes. You've got the large one and you've got the small one and they also come in slow and fast mount. Me personally, I always favor using the small one. A small bag is very aerodynamic. They cast no matter what the wind and they'll dart through the wind. And I think it's just enough bait personally for like I say, a one bite tactic and it isn't putting too much strain on your tackle. And like I say, you're able to get maximum distance. So I'm gonna crack the lid open now. I'm gonna tie one up. I'm gonna get it out of the packet and you'll notice you've got your little orange bag loader and then holding these bags in place, you have got a collar. Now, what you do is you crush the collar, like so, and you slide the black collar over the top, like so. And what that does is it just holds it in place while I complete the next step. So I'm gonna open up my bag of bags, take a bag from within the packet, Find the end and open up the bag. Then just blowing in it ever so slightly. You don't want to go 
blowing a raspberry in there because you're gonna end up melting the PVA. And I'm gonna thread this bag over the wide end of the collar and there's a little line on the side of the bag loader where you pull the bag up to. And then I'm gonna remove the plastic collar and that then grips the bag in place so it's nice and sturdy to start working with it. Now I like to put the hook bait at the bottom of the bag. Some people like to put it at the top, but I like to put it at the bottom of the bag. So I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of pellet. And the only reason I put a tiny little bit of pellet in there is because I use the pellets to ruffle between my fingers to make sure the corners of the bag are fully open. Once that's in there like so, and then I'm gonna grab my rig. Now a lot of people when they use solid bags they go very very short on the rig. Now I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing to do but me personally as you would have seen with my D-rig fishing I do like to fish a relatively long rig. So this one here is about five to six inches long but because you're loading it in the bag yourself you know that it isn't going to tangle on the car. So I'm going to drop the hook bait in first, give it a little shake and then I'm going to prise the hook bait right down into the bottom of the bag. So I've wiggled the bait all the way down and what you can see is the hook bait is in one corner and the hook is laying flat along the bottom with the point of the hook sitting down at the base of the bag. I don't like the point of the hook being sat up because when the PVA bag mounts, I want that hook to be away from where the lead is and to sit proud over the top of the little parcel of bait. So once that's dropped in there, I'm just gonna add another sprinkling of pellets. Now, like I said before, it's important that you get the lead as far down towards the bottom of the bag as possible. You don't wanna be filling it up now and dropping the lead right in at the last minute because when you cast it out, it's gonna be tumbling and it simply isn't gonna go as far as what you want it to go. I'm gonna take another little bit of pellet, like so. Give it a little shake now. Even though they are PVA bags, you can be quite rough with them. They do withstand quite a bit of pressure. And you can see there, there's probably about an inch of pellet in there. And then what I'm gonna do is making sure that that rig is sat down below the lead. I'm just gonna use the lead to almost punch the pellet down in place. Once I'm happy that that lead is in place, there's a tiny little groove in the top of the bag loader and I'm simply gonna hook my lead core into that so I know that that lead cannot move anywhere. I'm give it a slight little wiggle just to set it firm, lift it up and then all I'm gonna do is grab some more pellet and just fill up to how much you want in the bag. Like I say, solid bags are not always about how much you can put inside them. The reason why solid bags are so good is because they fish over any bottom. You can inject oils, any form of liquid into these for maximum attraction. They really are a mega, mega one bite tactic. And I think a big mistake a lot of people make is they make such a massive bag that when a fish comes over it, there's such a pile of bait in one area that they move it around, they waft it around, and they sort of ignore it. I always find with a small amount of bait, the fish comes over the top of it, one suck, the whole lot's inside, the rig's inside, and bang, you've got yourself a fish. So, that's in there like so, and I'm just gonna use the bag loader ever so gently just to push down on top of it, and I'm happy with how much is inside that. Now the lead's completely covered, the little bit of uh, rubber that comes out the top of the lead is just sat proud at the top of the pellet, and then all I'm gonna do, very, very simply, is hold in the bag, onto the loader is make a twist. Like I say, you can be quite rough with these. Give that a couple of twists so that can't go anywhere. Slowly start to push the loader over the top of the PVA bag. And then to seal it, I'm just gonna lick all the way round and I'm gonna push the loader back over the PVA bag like so. I always just give it a little squeeze for a couple of seconds just to make sure that the PVA has taken hold, push the bag out the end, and there is the base of your bag. Just tidy up any little bit that maybe that you may have missed. And that is the basis of your solid bag. Now as that is there, that would cast an absolute dream, but to make sure it casts even further, simply tip the bag upside down and just start working your corners. Like I keep saying, you can be quite rough. I think a lot of people sort of get a solid PVA bag and they're almost worried to sort of handle it but you can be really rough and you want to push them corners right down give it a little lick tuck it over like so it's also worth noting at this point the bait that you use inside a solid bag has to be small items you don't want to go put in anything bigger than about three mil certainly when it comes to pellets because anything bigger than three mil you know i've seen people trying to put five six eight mil pellets inside there's too much air and there's too much gap between each pellet. And when you tie 
a solid bag up and there's too many gaps in between the bait. They trap air, they don't fly very well, and it just looks a mess. And in order to get them as tight and as aerodynamic as possible, you wanna be using the smallest mix that you possibly can. And much like fishing with the mesh, I'm literally using 2.3 mil pellets and a tiny little bit of powder. And the reason why I use a bit of powder in there is because if I do decide to inject it with a bit of oil or a bit of liquid, the powder that's inside the bag, it will take to that very, very well. And it also adds extra weight to the bag as well. So that is a good a solid bag as you're ever gonna get. Look at that. Perfect one bite method that can be fished over any bar. The sun is just setting behind and it has been the most beautiful sunset tonight and uh, I'm in to another Norton Carp. This one again on a tiny little mesh bag of pellets that I'd threaded down the D-Rig. Like I say, I haven't used PVA nowhere near as much as what I should be using it and uh, this just proves that little PVA bags around a D-Rig, which is what I'd normally use, is getting me bites now. It's been absolutely Baltic the last few days. And uh, who knows, maybe that little bit of attraction of pellets around the hook bait, I'm getting bites quicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish two on PVA as I go through the night, and I'm gonna fish one as a single D-rig, just to see. But it is nice to chuck a rig out with a PVA bag on, something that I haven't done for ages. And you know what? I think I've missed it. Well, that's about that then. Another Norton 20, a little over 23 pound this one. Yeah, when I laid him on the mat, the mat is already iced over. It's another absolutely freezing cold night. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they carry on feeding throughout the hours of darkness. This time of year, more than ever, the sort of best bite time is normally between sort of one and just as the sun's about to set the warmest part of the day. But you know what? If I can keep on getting bites, I'm gonna stay awake because each and every one of these fish are absolutely stunning. It's not raining, it's nice and dry, although it is a little bit cold, but when you're catching carp, I ain't complaining. Well, after that fish just on dark last night, I half expected the action to carry on through the night. I tied up a load of bags in preparation, thinking that it was gonna happen. And uh, yeah, I've woken up this morning to a rather thick frost covering absolutely everything. And the bobbins are still sat in the same place as when I clipped them on last night after I caught that fish. So uh, yeah, it would appear that the fish decided that they didn't want to feed. And to be honest with you, I'm quite grateful for that, purely and simply because it was absolutely freezing cold. And uh, yeah, I probably didn't fancy getting out of the bivy myself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them in. Got a bit of a winds picked up now. Put little bags back on, back out onto the spot, freshen it up. Yesterday around the lake, a few fish come out around sort of two o'clock. So I'm probably gonna give it till about three, four o'clock today, just to see if the same bite time will repeat itself from what was happening yesterday. And you know what, if nothing else happens, I'm gonna drive home from here, a happy angler, because despite the conditions, super high pressure, bright blue skies, freezing cold temperatures, I've still managed to come out and give myself a couple of bites. So I'm gonna finish my coffee, bring them in, re-chuck them. Hopefully they go out there first time. Jobs are good and see what happens for the rest of the day. But like I say, if nothing happens, 
I'm going to be driving away a very, very happy angler. To be in with a chance of winning this absolutely fantastic Camelite multi bag with an insert, as well as two rapid bag loaders, one in large and one in small. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the Fox International YouTube channel and write in the comments section below, what did I say was the most versatile method when it comes to using PVA? Best of luck.